Well, good day and welcome to another episode of Factory Walkthrough, brought to you by Styrofan by Styromax, which is our range of 12 and 24 volt, 10 inch, 12 inch and 14 inch automotive electric cooling fan. Now, speaking of which, we're very pleased to announce that um, we launched our uh, fan series to the uh, general public two weeks ago uh, at the uh, running of the uh, Gulf Western Oils Winter Nationals out at Willowbank. So, it's a well-known uh, product used in uh, the automotive industry. So, uh, we are now bringing that uh, out to the general public. So, we launched that and. Um, we uh, sponsored uh, Josh Fletcher's uh, Supercharged Outlaw Dragster as part of our ongoing commitment with uh, Team Fletcher Racing. So we were very pleased to be on the side of, uh, of his Dragster for that event. Even more pleased to see him wrap up the Australian Championship for Supercharged Outlaw. So it was uh, great coverage for Styrofan, but of course, even better coverage for Team Fletcher Racing. I can also say that uh, Congrats to his dad who came second in the championship as well. Now you might be wondering why on earth we uh, manufacture these in uh, sunny old Queensland. Um, well this is actually part of our manufacturing heritage. Uh, before we manufactured uh, fiberglass composite panels we, uh, we manufactured uh, automotive heat exchangers for the large car companies. Be it Ford, Holden, Mitsubishi and the like. So. Uh, these uh, fans were developed back in the day to uh, complement uh, the automotive air conditioning systems uh, that uh, we were producing. Those that have been on a factory tour here will, uh, will they come to our DIY day, they will see our uh, little heritage display here and it's, uh, it's just a showcase of some of the products uh, that we used to make and of course uh, where I got my production heritage from and um, well, the way the business developed. Um, through into composite panels that it eventually did. So um, yeah, I mean those uh, fans are extremely universal. They're used in lots of places. So um, we still sell a big volume of those. So uh, we decided to keep that production line running. So enough about the past. Let's uh, see what's going on presently and let's we'll move into the future. Okay, so we've actually been doing some developing of some new product. This one's uh, gonna be a new protrusion. Uh, so we thought, um, we had the old sample and we modelled it in SolidWorks. We thought, oh, let's uh, just get it 3D printed. So we, uh, we had this 3D printed. So that's uh, in plastic. So we've then got a hard sample, you know, um, on our desk within 24 hours that uh, we can actually go and test fit and make sure it's going to do the job before we go to the trouble of uh, making a tool and uh, making this out of fiberglass protrusion. So that's been pretty cool. And this one here, that's a suspension part for. Uh, our daughter Brianna uh, with Brianna Barker Racing, so the rebuild on her race car. So this is uh, going to be a part of a traction aid. So uh, we had to develop that to suit the sort of car that we're going to fit it to. So we thought, uh, well, let's just do it out of plastic first and uh, see how it's all going to fit before we uh, go to the trouble of um, laser cutting in steel. So it's been a cool little project uh, for the CAD guys, you know, to design it in SolidWorks and then ship it out as a STL file and then uh, get it 3D printed in plastic. So, so much so, we love it so much, we're about to buy a 3D printer of our own so we can do that type of stuff and develop some different little bits and pieces that can be manufactured in plastic um, for the uh, accessories of RVs. So we're gonna look at that. But Right, well, lots going on out here. This place, going crazy with assembly so thank you very much for your support. Roger's old Studi Baker, old 1945 Studi Baker, she's complete, she's finished. Um, so it's going tomorrow, so it's got the big bow on it so um, we'll do another, there's another assembly video of this, I'll walk you through that in that one, we won't uh, waste too much time on that one in this video. but. Um, you might remember Brian's Hino, been sitting here just as a uh, as a frame for the past few months. So we've uh, finally got some panels up on it. So 
That's certainly changed uh, its appearance. Um, and looks great. I love it. It's, um, yeah, I think the amount that we've come out over the dual cab looks uh, quite enough, you know, it's probably about three quarter, I guess. So yeah, very nice. But inside, inside it's huge. You need to have a look at this. Now, this thing is massive inside. Um, we've got the rear door frame off it at the moment. Uh, I'm about to clad that up, so I can show you that a bit later on. But um, once you're inside this thing, it's massive. So yeah, there's uh, plenty of room. Plates inside the wall here. The bed's actually gonna lift up uh, into the roof. So that'll allow a vehicle that's gonna drive up the ramp to be parked inside here. But um, yeah, so much space. It's really cool. Okay, so there's a full complement of um, Aussie Traveller Eurovision windows to go into this build. Uh, Fiamma um, awning sidewall. We've got some uh, styro plates in behind the glass skin. You can see uh, where the magnets are at the moment. Um, at the back, we've uh, tapered the box out past the rear frame. So we've used a styro cap HD on the back of that just to uh, trim it off and cover the exposed panel which has turned out quite nice. So if we come over here we'll, I'll show you where the uh, rear door frame is. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, clad the outside with fiberglass skin and I'm going to fill the core with our 50mm polystyrene. So it'll be foam, glass and on this face uh, Brian will uh, add some or glue down some checker plate and that'll be for the uh, for the vehicle to run over. Okay so this is uh, Jeff and Inga's uh, off-road camper trailer that's just arrived. Um, it's a hybrid uh, little camper trailer here so uh, he's done a nice job with the uh, frame and suspension. Of course they were um, participants in one of our DIY days that we have here so lovely to see uh, people that come to those events that eventually turns into a build for them so um, that's great to see. Right so it's turned up He's put down the Styro Floor HD. It's our 19mm floorboard by uh, Thermalite. So what we've gone ahead and done now is done some profile check of the panel shape. So we've previously um, modelled this out off their drawings um, uh, and then done it in CAD and then produced a file where we can cut the profile down at the bottom and of course we're just um, checking that up against the real thing just to make sure uh, everything's square and true and where it should be. I'm happy to say this one is. It's a good job. Now equally on this side Dean's uh, hybrid camper trailer. He's also been a participant of our uh, DIY days. This one's been here for a while. We've been waiting on some um, grey fiberglass to turn up but unfortunately with shipping delays uh, that hasn't eventuated, so this build's actually going to go through white to get it through. So we've sped along and we have done the, again, profile checks up over the guards end to end just to make sure everything's uh, flat and true and where it should be. And it is very well done indeed. So uh, this one will move ahead pretty quickly. And you're probably wondering why we do this, you know, because uh, some of this can get pretty tricky. It might look simple, but um, when you make a frame and things and flex and twist and move and you know you can have one side that's three mil longer than the other and because um, we're building it here and we've got the opportunity in the machinery to just spit these out we can make fine adjustments and make it completely uh, smicko but what can you do at home if you don't have that ability well you know measure a million times is probably my first thing to say and check it but you know if you're afraid of um, cutting around guards, I mean, you can leave that solid panel and make yourself a template at home, get that right and lay that over the panel and cut that later. That can be done if you want to do it that way, but um, if you're confident enough and you've got your measurements right, we can cut it exactly to that. Of course, uh, both, both of these builds have uh, shower cubicles in them. They're from Flare Fiberglass over at Redcliffe Way, I believe. So uh, they seem to be the uh, shower enclosure of choice at the moment so um, 
good to see another uh, Queensland business doing well. All right, guys, I'm just hijacking from John for a second here. Just wanted to share with you one of our continuous improvement activities that we had for this year. Um, bring assemblies back online here at Star Maximum. We had obviously a lot of interest and a lot of bills coming in. Um, and how do we keep track of those builds? So um, we have a assembly board um, that we have um, with a lot of information around what options customers have available to them, what we offer as a service. Um, and it's really simple. We simply put a yes and no underneath each of them with estimated timeframes that we have. Um, sometimes obviously we do hit delays, so some supply issues um, for windows, doors especially at the moment. I know there's a lot of shortages around Australia. Um, air conditioners as well, they can take their time to come in. Um, but basically this is our um, great continuous improvement activity that we had on the go and obviously everything like that is always refined and um, we get the feedback as we go through the process and see if we can't improve it for the next time. So um, it's a great little board, it helps our assembly guy Gav and Dion um, to work on our builds when we're not necessarily here in, in the workplace um, and also allows for a bit of clarity with our customers to make sure that their expectations are met in what services we can actually provide for them. So we hope to bring you some more continuous improvement activities that we're doing throughout the workshop um, as we progress through the year, uh, time permitting of course. So. Um, I'll hand it back over right, to Let's head next door. There's some massive panels in there I want to show you. All right, check this out. 10 metres long, 2.8 metres high it'll be, 2.5 wide thereabouts when it's finished. It's the 16 pallet dry goods truck body. It's huge. So we've got a 105 mil thick roof panel sitting on a 30 mil panel. All right, so there's 10 metres long, 2.8 wide, no steel frame in there, it's just composite panel, 30 mil thick, so incredibly strong. And we're building, you know, truck bodies are getting built, have done for years, this size, this type of panelling. So, you know, if anyone says, oh, composite panel cannot handle, uh, you know, off-road in my little caravan running down some bush tracks, you know, here's something uh, that's way bigger, getting way more load on the uh, walls than your van ever will, and uh, yeah. They survive. So they've got the, uh, the foam for the uh, rear doors possibly for this build. So these are the uh, styro plates uh, getting pre-glued into the uh, foam panel before we uh, skin them or, or laminate it. So um, this is kind of the, this is the same process that's done in the uh, side walls of your RV, like next door with Brian's truck with the uh, with the awning going on the side. It's the same plate. So that's uh, pre-glued in. Uh, and then the following day they'll laminate uh, either side of the uh, styrofoam. Okay, what we got here is um, some side doors out of a, another type of refrigerated truck body. This one's 40 mil thick panel. So these are the, the barn side doors. And as you can see here, the machine will uh, cut any given profile that's uh, drawn into it. You can see here we've drilled the rivet holes through the panel. And of course in behind there is a uh, a steel plate just like you've seen uh, behind you there and of course then the uh, truck body manufacturer can simply just rivet these straight on. We'll have a look at the little pocket we've machined here this is for a flush lock. You've probably seen these on the side of uh, refrigerated truck bodies so uh, this is uh, how we do it so we'll machine the pocket at the CNC router the appropriate depth and position of where it's got to be. Uh, we've actually even drilled the, uh, the rivet holes for, uh, for this lock to uh, drop into so everything is uh, pretty much done for the uh, for the bodybuilder and it's just a very simple assembly job for them like so so these things you can actually use on the back of your toy hauler as well a flush lock like this so if you've got a full width opening rear door and you want a lock in the center you can do it with this and we do it in such a way where a pole stainless steel pole will go from one end to the other of your panel so th that's uh, run through a protrusion beam that we uh, put inside the panel at the appropriate position now for these guys here uh, we don't run a protrusion beam in there simply for cost um, but also we've got a machine that'll actually bore the hole through this panel from one end to the other and I'll show you where that is 
Now before we had our flash CNC routers, we used to cut all the refrigerated truck bodies by hand. Uh, I'm even doing the, the pockets that you saw outside there that the router does or drilling the holes. Uh, it was all done by hand, all marked out and done by hand. But this machine here we developed to uh, router out the hole uh, for the pocket in the outside face of the side door and also to bore the hole up the guts of the door for the stainless steel pole. Now of course as shown over there our machines do the pocket now and drilling of the holes but we still use this machine to bore the hole up the uh, centre of the door. So I'll show you how it works. We would uh, lay a door slab in here like so. Okay so you'd lock it into position here and then you turn this one on and you'd go right around the outside like so and stop and you'd pluck out the piece of fiberglass skin. So this jig here, all it did was take out the glass skin. You'd roll that to one side. We'd then roll the next jig into place. Now this one with a, with a different bit and a much bigger width, bit would drop into the same position and it was set to a depth and you'd go through and you'd take out the, uh, you'd take out the foam when you were done, you were left with a nice pocket. Labour intensive, yes, you know, but did the job. You know, it was pretty accurate um, because of the jigging that we had done. So anyway, you would have that, you'd have your door slab, you'd have your pocket then machined out. Then of course we had to bore a hole through the length of the, uh, of the panel in the correct position. So with the panel in here, these pads were pushing down to make sure the door doesn't move. And then you turn the, uh, the drill on, and then we carefully drill up inside the, uh, the panel like so. Of course, uh, that could come from both ends if need be. Some doors were left hand, some were right hand. All right, guys, well, that's about all I've got for you today on this episode of Factory Walkthrough. Um, for the next DIY day, we're still trying to finalise a few things for that one, so we'll keep you updated on that. Uh, I can tell you that Sam has been busy in front of the camera doing a care and maintenance video on how to wash, polish, and look after your Styromax panel. So that will be dropping shortly, so be sure to check out that when it does. All right, so that's it. It's enough for me. Don't forget to click, like, share, and hit that bell notification button so you'll know next time we drop a video. See you next time.